हेलो गाइस हाउ आर यू आई एम हरदीप सिंह वेलकम बैक टू योर ओन यूट्यूब चैनल आल्स अपडेट्स एंड रीसेंट एग्जाम्स फॉर मोर अपडेट्स रिलेटेड टू रीसेंट आल्स एग्जाम राइटिंग दस टॉपिक्स लिस्टनिंग रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट एंड स्पीकिंग क्यू कैट गेस्ट वर्क प्लीज गाइस पार्टिसिपेट इन एवरी डे लिस्टनिंग एंड रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट टू अचीव योर डिजायर बैंड स्कोर इन योर एक्चुअल आल्स एग्जाम Please hit the like and subscribe button. Press the bell icon for the upcoming notifications. Don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page Alts updates and recent exams. Part 1. You will hear a conversation between an insurance broker and a client. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Good morning, madam. Can I help you? Actually, yes. I've just got a new flat, and I'm going to move my things in tomorrow. And I haven't got any insurance yet for my things. I'd like a quotation for my car insurance as well to see if you can give me a better deal. It's coming up for renewal soon, you see. Fine. That shouldn't be a problem. Let's just take down some details. First of all, can I have your name, please? Of course. It's Mrs. Norma Willis. Good. That's Norman without an N, isn't it? Yes, that's right. And can I have the address that you're moving to, please? It's flat eight, Chepping Dean, twenty-three Dean Road, Westley. Can you spell Chepping Dean, please? Of course. Chepping is spelt C H E P. P I N G, and Dean is spelt D E N E. The name of the road, Dean, is spelt the same way too. And what's the postcode there? It's W E three nine H T. Can I take a telephone number? It will have to be only my mobile, I'm afraid, as I haven't installed a landline yet. My mobile is. O seven five two five seven four five six four two. Let's look at the car insurance first quickly. I need the model, age, and engine size. It's a four-year-old Toyota MR2 sports car. It has a two-liter engine. Will it be parked in a garage, in a drive, or in the road? At my present address, it's in the drive. But the flat that I'm moving into tomorrow has a garage provided, and tenants are not allowed to leave their cars in the visitor spaces, so it will be garaged all the time. Two more questions. The first is, do you have any no claims bonus? And the second is, do you have any driving convictions? I have three years no claims, but I had a claim for a new windscreen this year, and I don't know if that will affect it. No, that won't count. The no claims will stand. Good. As for convictions, I have three points for being caught speeding two years ago. Before the conversation continues, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. Right. Let's have a look at the household stuff now, while the computer is checking rates for the car. So, what kind of flat is it? It's a two-bedroom flat. Have you bought the flat, or are you renting? I'm just renting it. So, you just need some household insurance for your possessions. That's right. First of all, can you give me a list of all the things that you want covered by the insurance? Yes. First of all, there's my electrical goods like my hi-fi, 
TV, DVD player, video player, a couple of radios, a hairdryer, my laptop and printer. I've estimated all the values of the electrical goods. There are various DVDs and CDs too. It should come to about £2,500. Anything else? Yes, there's my jewellery. I've some necklaces, bracelets, rings and brooches that I inherited. They're all in different metals and with different jewels. I've got a list itemising them all here. I've also got a small strong box which screws into the cupboard so they're reasonably safe. Anything else? Well, just the usual kitchen stuff and clothes that I'd like to be included. OK, that's not a problem. Now I need to ask some things about the flat. What floor is it on? Well, I wanted a first floor flat, but this is a ground floor one. I can use the garden with it, though. Hmm. Yes, but the premium will be a little higher, because of course a burglar finds it more difficult to enter a flat on the first floor. Oh, I never thought about that. What about safety measures in the flat? Well, there are two different keys for the front door, and one of them is a deadbolt, so that's quite good. I've been to the local shop and ordered a burglar alarm too, which has a motion sensor and everything. It's not in yet, but it will be soon. That's good. The windows are quite new and all double glazed, so like all new windows nowadays, they have extra locks on them, so that makes it quite secure. That's good too. So really, it's reasonably safe. That will make a difference on the premium. Do you know if there's a smoke alarm fitted in that flat? I never thought of that. I think it's the law now if you're renting, so there must be. Well, that's about it. Let's look now. I've got two quotes for you. First the car, and then the household. £750 fully comp for the car, or £500 third party fire and theft. The contents is £100. Does the contents cover me if I lose something, or I'm robbed outside the home? As long as it's in this country and on the list of items covered, yes. Well, I'll keep the old car insurance as my present deal is better, and I'll take the contents. Can I pay by cheque? Cash, cheque, credit card, anything you want. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. You will hear a residence manager giving a short question and answer session to new residents. First you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Good evening everyone. My name is Simon and I am the manager of this residence. Most of you here today are new in the town of Westley. Some of you are students at the uni, some have new jobs and some have other reasons to be with us. When we have lots of new people staying with us, I do one of these little question and answer sessions so that I can help you settle in. So, let's get started straight away. Yes, over there. Hi, I'm Margaret. I'm a student here. I was wondering where I can do my laundry. It won't be long before this is an urgent thing for me. Here in the residence, we are planning a little laundrette beside reception, but this might take a little time to organise. In the meantime, there's a little laundrette down the road. It's in Queen's Avenue, 
the same street that the residence is in. You go about 500 metres up the road in the opposite direction to the town centre and it's on the right. They have plenty of machines and dryers and there's a lady there called Betty who does service washes. You just need to drop it off and it will be laundered, dried and ironed the next day. It's a bit more expensive of course, but good if you're lazy. Another question? Hi, my name's Jo. I've got a new job at the other end of the high street. I was wondering which the best bus was to go there. The best bus for the centre of town is the 38. That takes you straight to the square. If you work at the end of the high street though, that still leaves you with about a 10 minute walk. The 39 goes to the train station, which is very near the end of the high street. So that's your best bet probably. The 39 is good for coming home late at night as well because the station buses go on later than the other buses. There's the 35 bus too for getting to the high street but it goes to the near end of the high street and it's a good 20 minute walk after getting off. Anyone else? You there. I'm a student too. I'm new in the area and I have to register for my council tax. Do you know where I have to go to register? Yes, we get lots of people in your situation. You other students need to do this too. First of all, get the information sheet from the Students Union, which has lots of guidelines on registering and the discounts you should get. The Students Union is in Newbolt Street. I'm sure you know that. The actual putting your name on the list though should be done at the Town Hall, which is right next to the square. Some people are told that you can do it at the police station, but that's just the registration for non-UK nationals, not the council tax. You now have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Any more questions? Come on, I'm sure you must have some more. Yes, I was wondering what we do in the case of a fire here at the residence. Well, the first thing to do is to raise the alarm by setting off the electric alarm system. Then, if the fire is not big, try and use the fire extinguishers that you'll find round the residence. If the fire is in any way large, just get out and go to the assembly point on the front lawn. Try not to go in the front or back car parks as that's where the fire brigade will set up their stuff. You don't need to call the fire brigade as our residence alarm is linked up to their system. Make sure you read the fire notices around so you know where the nearest fire escape is to your room. Don't panic and rush around. That gets people hurt. Just go briskly to the assembly point. Once every six months we have a fire drill which is attended by someone from the fire service to make sure we're up to scratch. One of these might be at night, so be ready. Hi everyone, I just wanted to ask what time the TV room closed for the night. It's just that my room is just across from it and I don't want to be kept awake all night. The usual cut-off time for the TV room is 11pm, though this is extended by one hour on Fridays and Saturdays. I know that some people want to watch late night films, but then you'll just have to buy your own TVs for your rooms. If you do have a TV in your room, then please think of others and keep the volume down. 
we take a very dim view of people disturbing others in the residence. The same goes for the TV room itself. Just keep the volume levels down. Anything else from anybody? I've got a question too, actually. I've got a job that will get me back late in the evening, and I won't always be able to eat. Are there any good places nearby that deliver food? The quick answer is yes, there are lots of places. There is an Indian nearby. Fish and chips is sold in a shop that is funnily enough run by a Chinese family. There is a good Thai restaurant, a Mexican and an Italian pizzeria. They all deliver apart from the Mexican, but that's only five minutes walk away. All the telephone numbers are up on the resident's notice board. The first time you order from each of them, just ask them to stick a menu into the bag and you'll build up a library in no time. Now, let me tell you about... That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. You will hear two students called Jane and Mark talking to their tutor about the project assignments for their senior thesis. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 23. So, you were both given your project assignments for your senior thesis today, right? Yes, and we already have to submit our topics next week. But how could they give us a grade this soon? No, next week's due date will not be counted towards your final grade. The teachers are just going to read your topic and give you feedback. Oh, I see. So, first we should come up with our topics, and then what? Well, once you know what you want to study, you need to think about how you'll study it. You need to decide on your research methods. The methods will be the main part of your paper. What about the results section? Well, I can give you feedback on that, but you will be the one carrying out an experiment and thus will have to produce the results on your own. What I would like to do today is practice writing research papers before you even begin your report. I'll give you samples of old data from past experience, and you can practice writing results and drawing conclusions. I think that would be really helpful. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of extra work, but I'm sure it would make our actual project easier. You're exactly right. So let's get started. First, let's try this simple experiment on fruit flies. Read the information, and then take 25 minutes to summarize a results and conclusion section. That's really important. Pay attention to the time limit. OK. Does it still have to be 6,000 words? No, don't worry about that. What if we get off topic? I wouldn't worry too much. You'll have so much information to write about that it should be easy to stay on topic. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 24 to 30. But what about other sources? Well, for this assignment, you can use the one from your textbook. 
In your actual paper, you should find old experiments that support your topic. So do we need to find different types of sources? For instance, should I be conducting lots of interviews to use in my paper? No, there's no need to conduct lots of interviews or anything like that. OK, I'm ready to get started. I'm still a little confused, though, on how we should format our paper. Don't worry about it for now, but on your final paper, make sure to pay attention to the format. It should follow the guidelines exactly. Oh, man, I'm starting to understand why they give us all semester to do this. Are there any other small details like that that we should know about? Not a whole lot. Make sure you provide two copies, one for your teacher, of course, but one for yourself as well. And, of course, you know the due date, right? Uh, it's April the 11th, right? What? No, it's May 11th, right? Yes, the due date is May 11. Write it down. Oh, wow, yeah, I need to note it. Also, I'm having trouble finding information on my topic. What if I can't find enough good sources? It's all right to change your topic. Just make sure to do it before the beginning of April. Oh, really? Wow, I'm, I'm definitely going to change it then. Just make sure to write a note to your teacher, letting him or her know. OK, so getting back to writing this sample paper, where do we start? Should I just explain the experiment and what happened? Well, you need to start with your hypothesis, what you think will happen, and then describe your procedure. Then you can write up the results and your conclusions. Oh, boy. I don't know if I can handle any more instructions. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. You will hear an introduction about an eco-friendly building called the Gherkin. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Today, I'd like to tell you about how UK architects are playing their part to address the issue of global warming. You have seen many of these iconic buildings while going about your everyday life, but you may not know how they are affecting your tomorrow. In 2003, construction was completed on the famous Swiss rebuilding, or more informally called the Gherkin a true masterpiece commissioned by the law offices of Foster and Partners. This is not the first ambitious endeavour of the firm. They are renowned for their various philanthropic environmental efforts. The Gherkin, with its cut-and-edge green initiative and sharp design, is gaining recognition as an icon in modern architecture. You can pick it out of the London skyline by its unorthodox cigar shape. While its appearance is the obvious attribute at which to marvel, there is far more to this building than meets the eye. And let's face it, there's a lot about this building that meets the eye. The building helps reduce the city's carbon footprint in a number of ways. Just a quick note, in case you're not familiar with the term carbon footprint, get used to it. It's a buzzword you'll hear relentlessly to talk about reducing emissions. Think of it as the amount of harmful greenhouse gases that are given off into the environment by a single person, organisation or product. So going back to the Gherking building, perhaps the most obvious as well as the most significant eco-friendly feature is the glass windows, which allow light to pass through the building. 
both reducing heating costs and brightening up the workspace. The ingenuity behind the various eco-friendly aspects of the Gherkin has seen its fair share of publicity both from serious and silly sources. In a recent April Fool's Day edition, one e-publication printed a story detailing plans to replace 50% of the current exterior with grass, which would not only make large steps in the name of sustainability, but also give the building the green hue that would truly earn it the nickname of the gherkin. The only drawback is, as you may have guessed, that this story was an April Fool's Day joke and completely made up. In all seriousness though, the building is setting a new standard of design that other architects and city planners just cannot ignore. The building's bold and cost-efficient design has won a number of architecture awards, including the Sterling Prize, the London Region Award, and the Empress Skyscraper Award, among others. The design comfortably accommodates a large number of offices, while keeping maintenance and operation costs down, striking a superb balance between nature and the workplace. Nature is well and good, as long as the weather is nice outside. Given London's notoriously bad weather, the architects knew they must devise a quality temperature regulation system, and that they did. A special system designed to reduce the building's reliance on air conditioning was devised that cuts consumption in half compared to standard office buildings. There are atria that link each floor vertically to one another, forming spiraling spaces of the entire building. They serve not just as social common spaces, but also act as the building's lungs, distributing clean air from the opening panels in the facade through the entire building. The building isn't all business though. It has its fair share of fun as well. At the very top, a club room offers a picturesque entertainment spot for company functions, private parties, etc., with a breathtaking panoramic view of the city. The creation of such an innovative structure has many wondering what the future of urban planning and architecture may be. Well, if the other projects currently commissioned by Foster & Partners are any indication, the entire city constructed with similarly eco-friendly buildings is not far in the distance. The Mazda City development aims to create a desert city that produces zero waste and removes as much carbon dioxide from the atmosphere as it puts in, a huge feat in protecting our Earth. The Gherkin is a truly impressive feat, yet it is not the only one worth noting. Now to move on to another green initiative, I'll tell you about the Eden Foundation building found in Cornwall. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. So guys, don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. I'll update some recent exams for more updates related to recent IELTS exam writing as topics, listening, reading, practice test and speaking QCAD guesswork. Please guys participate in everyday new IELTS listening and reading practice tests to achieve your desired band score in your actual IELTS exam. For more IELTS material visit my official website www.ieltsupdatesandrecentexams.com. The link is given below in the description. If you need PDF files of latest IELTS material then please join my telegram channel. So guys please write your score below the comment section. Again, thanks for listening. God bless you all guys. Stay tuned. Stay safe.